So, we are looking at uh, varying area ducts and we have looked at their general behavior how uh, the flow to variable area ducts uh, change, how do these ducts behave in uh, different flow regimes subsonic flow, supersonic flow they behave differently and if you want to produce uh, say a supersonic flow starting from a subsonic flow you need to give a convergent divergent uh, duct. Mm, similarly, if you want to produce a subsonic flow starting with a supersonic flow again you have to give a convergent divergent duct. This minimum area point is important. Mm, so, various such concepts were uh, introduced. Now, let us go and start looking uh, closer at uh, uh, nozzles and uh, diffusers and uh, we will start with the converging nozzle and here we will come across a very important concept of uh, mass flow rate choking. What do you mean by choking? Uh, and uh, so, uh, other important point is all through these discussions we were looking only at uh, effect of area ratio on various quantities particularly emphasizing on uh, velocities and Mach number. But we have to really see uh, if you just put a uh, nozzle or a uh, diffuser uh, it will not produce a certain flow in order to produce the flow you have to apply a certain uh, pressure differential across it. Now, this is quite well known any uh, uh, student of fluid mechanics will know that pressure is what affects the uh, flow changes. Uh, now, how are those pressure changes related to uh, these changes in uh, area? Okay. It is an isentropic flow, uh, but when the flow exhausts to certain uh, ambient or back pressure, then how does the flow behave? So, these uh, terminologies one has to understand. So, we are looking at uh, convergent nozzle. So, converging nozzle or convergent nozzle. When uh, we talk about a converging nozzle, the, uh, you should understand by now that uh, incoming flow is uh, uh, subsonic small velocities okay, and uh, nozzle increases the flow. So, uh, it increases to uh, larger uh, velocities. Uh, a converging uh, nozzle has a minimum area, this is the minimum area here uh, region 2. Now, uh, uh, when we are looking along with pressure effects, when we are uh, seeing this uh, together with pressure, we should understand what we mean by various terminologies with respect to pressure. Now, the flow coming out of such a uh, nozzle can it can be uh, attached to another device uh, that is one uh, kind of a system. Uh, if that is so, then uh, at this point 2 it may be uh, subjected to a certain uh, pressure from uh, the uh, downstream device. So, that kind of a pressure is known as uh, uh, back pressure okay. or uh, this uh, uh, particular uh, Uh, it may be uh, this particular uh, duct may be opening out into an uh, ambient or into a larger uh, uh, reservoir or ambient then uh, pressure all around it that is getting imposed right all around it uh, the pressure is known as p ambient or p ambient pressure okay uh, and pressure right at the exit of the uh, nozzle in this case uh, the minimum area is here and uh, very often the minimum area is also referred to as the throat. So, that is also called uh, another terminology. So, at the throat uh, in this case the throat is the exit. So, pressure of the flow at uh, the exit at the throat uh, that is exit pressures. Uh, now, there are various scenarios uh, in the operation of nozzles when all these uh, parameters need not always be the same. Okay. Uh, so, that is uh, important uh, and always there is a uh, pressure that much higher pressure being provided at the in inlet and uh, usually you refer to uh, these higher pressure in terms of the reservoir pressure. 
zero and reservoir temperature uh, T naught. If the velocities at the inlet are very small, then uh, the static pressure and temperature are approximately equal to the stagnation pressure and temperature. But if they are not, if they lie at higher uh, subsonic velocities, then you have to uh, calculate uh, either the stagnation pressure temperature or static pressure temperature to look at what is happening inside the um, duct. Okay. So, uh, uh, having understood these different terminologies about pressures, uh, let us uh, go ahead and we want to express, we are mainly interested in uh, what is happening to uh, mass flow rate uh, as it uh, as you change uh, pressure. Okay. So, uh, what we are looking at is initially if you consider uh, that uh, you have uh, applied no per, uh, pressure at all onto this converging nozzle, then there will be no flow across the converging nozzle. So, uh, velocity is 0 everywhere. Now, you start increasing pressure that is you have started increasing pressure at uh, section 1. Uh, there is a pressure differential across the nozzle and uh, flow starts begins and uh, uh, as a consequence you get increased velocity, mass flow uh, starts increasing, you get higher and higher uh, flows. It is very much similar to that you have a uh, valve, so you have a large tank and then you have a duct, uh, you have a pipe and that pipe has a valve and then uh, you have a uh, uh, nozzle over here. Initially, uh, uh, you even though you have a larger pressure uh, available to you, the, the valve is closed and there is no flow. Slowly now the valve is opened. Uh, this can this is one of the scenario that you have. Uh, then what happens? Okay, so this is what we are looking at. Now, as uh, as long as the exit flow, uh, the exit uh, uh, velocity, the exit velocity uh, v uh, t uh, or which is less than 1 is subsonic. Uh, then uh, as long as there is a subsonic flow coming out at exit, then uh, the exit pressure p e should be equal to uh, the uh, ambient pressure or back pressure. Okay, so, this is uh, a very important uh, principle in uh, subsonic flows, uh, there cannot be any uh, pressure differences uh, between uh, say back pressure or exit pressure, because the information about uh, pressure travels all through uh, on all directions, but this situation is not true once uh, you reach sonic conditions and go beyond uh, sonic conditions. Uh, because you already know from our earliest uh, descriptions on flow regimes that in uh, supersonic flows, um, uh, the information transfers only in a certain directions, not in all directions. So, uh, the exit uh, knows about what is the ambient pressure or the back pressure uh, as long as the flow is uh, subsonic, but uh, the moment the flow changes over and becomes um, sonic or supersonic, then uh, that information transfer gets uh, cut off. So, there are uh, consequences of uh, that. How will that affect the flow here? Okay. So, let us go ahead with that. So, we are looking at uh, now uh, relating uh, pressure ratios to what is happening in the nozzle. So, uh, because of that we have to write all the equations that we had done earlier in terms of Mach number or uh, velocities in terms of uh, pressures. Uh, it can be done, it is a uh, isentropic flow. Uh, the velocity at the exit, so given a stagnation uh, uh, enthalpy H naught, this is just nothing but C p t naught. Okay. Given this uh, stagnation enthalpy, and uh, at the throat, if the enthalpy is H T, okay, the C P T, okay, uh, then velocity can be found out uh, at the throat P T is uh, uh, nothing but uh, square root of two H naught minus H T. Okay, uh, this is directly from the energy equation. Uh, 
you can get this. Uh, now, further on, uh, this can be expressed um, now uh, h naught minus h t is you can express this as C p t naught minus t C p t and taking C p t naught out this is 1 minus t by uh, t naught okay. and uh, C p is gamma r by gamma minus 1. So, that is how this term gamma r t naught by gamma minus 1 comes about and it is an isentropic flow. So, t by t naught uh, can be expressed in terms of p by p naught whole power gamma minus 1 by gamma. So, that is how this term comes p, uh, p t by p naught uh, whole power gamma minus 1 by gamma. You can also use the fact that gamma r t naught is a naught. So, you get this particular uh, equation. So, here uh, the velocity at the throat is now expressed in terms of uh, pressure ratios. Earlier we were looking at area ratios. Now, we will combine uh, the two descriptions. Okay. So, now uh, uh, you can write uh, the mass flow rate at the throat m dot is uh, rho throat uh, a throat and uh, velocity at the throat and the density at the throat is p t by r t t ok r t t and this can be expressed uh, uh, in terms of p naught and t naught this is something that we had done earlier also ok. So, uh, this p naught in a t by square root of gamma r t naught this term has occurred uh, before also ok. And this term p t by p naught uh, 2 power gamma comes from uh, rho t by rho naught. So, how is rho t by rho naught uh, expressed in terms of p t by p naught. So, here you see that uh, the mass flow rate is expressed purely in terms of uh, pressure ratios. So, now let us see what happens. So, now you have given uh, you, you have a converging throat and now you are applying a certain so, in uh, all these descriptions you find that pressure ratios are important. So, if you talk in terms of pressure ratio it is uh, sufficient because pressure ratios is what figures in uh, these equations uh, and pressure ratio is important absolute pressures of course, you need to note them when you have to provide a particular pressure, but the performance of these devices are dependent on pressure ratios or temperature ratios or area ratios. So, the ratio is uh, very important. So, if you can understand in terms of pressure ratios, you can understand in general uh, what happens to these uh, flows. So, uh, uh, what you are uh, doing is as you are uh, increasing, uh, you can do uh, two ways. So, uh, given that p t by p naught is what is important, uh, generally the p t is um, uh, p t now this is exiting. So, this is equal to ambient pressure initially p t is equal to p ambient initially and uh, 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 you are increasing uh, the uh, stagnation pressure increase giving higher and higher uh, pressures p naught is rising. So, p t by p naught uh, decreases ok. So, your uh, decreases it could uh, you could also think of it at you have a high pressure uh, at the upstream side and you are decreasing uh, the ambient pressure. Both ways uh, you can look at the problem as long as you understand it in terms of p t by p naught either way should help you understand the problem ok. So, if you uh, now what we are uh, looking at the problem is p t that is p ambient is constant and we are increasing uh, p naught. So, p t by uh, p naught uh, decreases. So, uh, as uh, p naught uh, keeps increasing you can look at the mass flow rate uh, equation here uh, it has p naught term over here ok. So, p naught as it increases mass flow through the um, system increases ok. So, the mass flow uh, through this uh, uh, system increases it can continue to increase and you also see there is p t by p naught term as p t by p naught decreases you can look at what happens to velocity exit velocity uh, t naught is a constant uh, p t by p naught decreasing uh, implies 1 minus p t by p naught uh, 
this value will increase that means u t will increase. So, your exit velocity will keep uh, increasing. Now, can this be done uh, infinitely? Can you keep decreasing p t by p naught and forever uh, will the uh, velocity increase at u t? Will mass flow rate forever increase to large values? This is the question that we are trying to answer and the answer is no, there is a certain limit. Uh, so, if the uh, p t by p naught approaches so, if this velocity at the exit okay, u t exactly becomes equal to a star that is Mach number becomes equal to 1. Okay. When uh, Mach number becomes uh, equal to 1 then uh, what happens is that uh, your uh, uh, the effect of downstream uh, conditions whatever changes happens in the downstream will not travel upstream. This is a limitation uh, imposed by uh, flows which become uh, where the, um, the Mach number becomes greater than equal to 1. Uh, there is no upstream propagation, upstream propagation of information. So, uh, a decrease in uh, uh, the uh, pressure P t by P naught continuously increases u t until the point that uh, u t becomes exactly equal to uh, a star or Mach number becomes equal to 1. Uh, beyond that point any decrease in say if I keep p naught constant and I decrease p t beyond this particular point a star uh, there can be no change in uh, velocity u t at this particular point it will be equal to that of Mach 1. So, if you started off with an initial uh, T naught uh, uh, that is a temperature uh, stagnation temperature uh, you can find out what is the corresponding T star. So, T star uh, by T naught uh, this value is 1 by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 is 2 by gamma plus 1. So, this value is known. Okay. So, this value is known and uh, so uh, correspondingly you can find what is A star is 2 by gamma plus 1 multiplied by uh, gamma r t naught. So, square root of this velocity will be exactly equal to this and it will not change for a given uh, t naught. Okay. So, uh, similarly the pressure at this uh, exit p exit once it reaches uh, Mach number equal to 1 the pressure will not change for a given p naught. Uh, p star by p naught is uh, uh, the same thing the so, p star by p naught is 2 by gamma plus 1 whole power uh, gamma by gamma minus 1. So, from here you can find out what is p star. So, further changes will not change pressure temperature at the um, exit uh, uh, for constant p naught and t naught. That means, uh, if you look at and the Mach number is uh, equal to 1. So, if you go back and look at the mass flow rate uh, relationship this all these becomes constant. P, uh, p t by p naught is p star by p naught okay. and uh, p naught is constant t naught is constant or in other terms m dot t becomes uh, constant. So, uh, if you do plot m dot t versus p t by p naught this is what you observe that um, as you start uh, decreasing p t by p naught from 1. So, initial case you do not have uh, you can take uh, the entire thing to be at a constant pressure there is no flow happening. Uh, once flow starts happening then P t by P naught will start uh, reducing. Okay. This can be either due to increase in P naught or uh, due to uh, decrease in uh, uh, P t it is valid in both case as long as you look at the ratio P t by uh, p naught. So, mass flow rate uh, this is non dimensional uh, mass flow rate normalized mass flow rate uh, all other terms are here are 
for a given constant p naught and t naught if you take constant p naught and t naught uh, decrease of p t by p naught implies um, a decrease implies p t is decreasing or uh, if the nozzle is exhausting into ambient or the, the back pressure or ambient pressure is decreasing ok. So, mass flow rate will increase more and more flow can now pass through the nozzle it can continue to do that, but only to a particular limit ok. The moment that limit is reached which is p star um, by p naught ok. The moment that limit is reached uh, then uh, from then on uh, mass flow rate cannot increase because the exit velocity uh, pressure and temperature becomes fixed at star values p star t star and a star. Further decrease in uh, pressure uh, temperature downstream of the uh, convergent nozzle downstream of the convergent nozzle ok. Uh, if you continue to decrease P T uh, this decrease in pressure is not felt uh, by the uh, minimum area or the throat of the nozzle uh, because the flow has become uh, Mach number equal to 1 or it has become sonic and upstream propagation of uh, pressure is not uh, possible. So, any changes in downstream does will not affect upstream the, it becomes uh, the nozzle will uh, operate in fixed conditions and uh, mass flow rate becomes fixed. So, this phenomena is known, known as the choking, choking phenomena mass flow rate becomes choked this is something important in the context of um, variable area ducts. So, one has to bear in uh, mind uh, what you mean by choking phenomena and how is pressure ratio uh, related to choking phenomena and uh, when does this particular condition uh, when is it achieved in the case of here we are discussing the convergent nozzle, but we will see this this is actually true uh, in other cases in other nozzles also. Uh, now, if you look at uh, uh, an increase in P naught, so uh, uh, we had looked at uh, uh, we were focusing on P t by P naught and this is normalized Mach number. So, uh, normalized mass flow rate, normalized mass flow rate of course, will become constant, but what about uh, absolute mass flow rate when you consider uh, the case that uh, uh, the convergent system uh, convergent nozzle is there ambient pressure is held constant ok. The ambient pressure is held constant and P naught is kept on increasing ok. So, if you consider this case uh, is this particular case then uh, uh, as P naught uh, increases initially uh, you have the mass flow rate increasing uh, in a non-linear fashion it increases in a non-linear fashion, uh, but once Mach number 1 is achieved that is Mach number becomes equal to P, P, P by uh, P naught by uh, P t becomes equal to P naught by P star. So, once that particular point is achieved uh, then from then on uh, Mach number at the uh, exit or the throat uh, cannot increase beyond 1. So, Mach number will be fixed at 1. Um, so, uh, if you have a constant T naught, so T naught remains constant, uh, then uh, velocity is also fixed, V is fixed at A star. But uh, mass flow rate is not uh, constant because mass flow rate, if you look at the uh, relationship, it is. Uh, p naught a by square root of uh, uh, t naught and some constant for uh, conditions uh, uh, beyond uh, some constant for choked conditions choked conditions because Mach number is 1. So, uh, Mach uh, m dot is directly proportional to p naught. So, it is a linear relationship. So, m dot will keep increasing as you increase uh, p naught given uh, for a given fixed uh, uh, ambient condition or back pressure condition 
so this you have to understand uh, even though uh, you understanding in terms of uh, pressure ratio is useful uh, uh, to uh, look at a general system, but specifically when you are looking uh, at uh, increase in P naught and how does mass flow rate increase, initially it will increase in a non-linear fashion, but after achieving uh, choking condition, choking condition is uh, that Mach number equal to 1 at the exit of the convergent nozzle. Uh, if you continue to increase P naught, mass flow rate will continue to increase. Uh, the reason is that P star by P naught uh, is a constant. Uh, so, 2 by gamma plus 1, gamma by gamma minus 1. Uh, now, this one is, so uh, P star is now uh, going to go as P star is 2 by gamma plus 1 gamma by gamma minus 1 multiplied by P naught, but P naught is continuously increasing that means exit pressure keeps on increasing, uh, P t keeps increasing, P t keeps increasing means density keeps increasing. Uh, so, uh, rho a uh, v star a is fixed a t, so density is increasing mass flow rate will increase. So, uh, bear in mind about the relationships of uh, uh, the pressure ratios across these devices, convergent uh, devices or a variable area ducts. The relationship of the pressure ratio with mass flow rate and relationship of pressure ratio with uh, uh, velocities at the exit. Okay, this has to be clearly borne in mind. Uh, as long as uh, you have a subsonic flow that is coming out at the exit, uh, P exit uh, or equal to P throat is equal to P ambient or P back pressure. Uh, this boundary condition is correct because in subsonic flow, uh, the flow can always communicate upstream or downstream. Uh, it will inform the nozzle, uh, the exit of the nozzle that uh, see the exit pressure is a such and such value and nozzle will adjust uh, the mass flow rate in order to uh, satisfy the uh, pressure condition. But once it as arrives, it achieves Mach 1, the ambient pressure uh, or the back pressure is never felt by the uh, nozzle, because it has uh, achieved Mach 1. Uh, as a consequence of that, uh, uh, the uh, back pressure at, uh, or the exit pressure of the nozzle is not necessarily equal to ambient pressure or uh, back pressure. Okay, so, this condition has to be uh, understood. Then how do we calculate exit pressure? You know P naught, you know the area ratio for this A e by uh, A 2 by A 1. If you know A 2 by A 1, you know P naught, you can uh, find out the relationship between what is M 2 and M 1. If you know M2 by M1, P0 is a constant, you can find what is um, the Mach number. If it is a convergent uh, nozzle, uh, Mach number uh, beyond choking is always 1 here. So, this A2 becomes equal to A star. Okay. So, uh, that is uh, the important point here. So, uh, so, often a lot of questions are asked because this is a a uh, new concept, uh, uh, something that is uh, uh, confusing uh, somewhat, uh, you have to understand this very closely. Uh, a lot of things that come into a picture here, you have pressure ratios, you have mass flow rate, you have velocity, all of them are changing together. So, some questions that are usually asked when uh, we do this particular section is, uh, suppose the nozzle is working in choked condition it is having a certain minimum area. So, this certain minimum area is there, nozzle is working in choked condition, nozzle working in choked condition with constant uh, upstream pressures T naught, P naught, all these are constant. Uh, that means then mass flow rate is constant, is fixed, it does not change if you change the back pressure over here. Um, now, what happens if suddenly uh, the uh, 
minimum area is changed ok. Uh, this may happen in some engineering devices, but it is certainly a good uh, thought experiment to uh, do. Uh, uh, of course, you have variable uh, throat uh, nozzles and uh, devices of that kind. Uh, so, what happens uh, then is that uh, provided that you are having the correct pressure differential in order to sustain choked conditions. So, uh, if you have sufficiently high pressure uh, for a given ambient condition, so that you have uh, you are sure that P star by P naught is satisfied that means that all conditions um, this Mach number will be equal to 1. Then uh, the moment the area is reduced then the Mach number should uh, sorry the mass flow rate m dot is p naught a by square root of t naught multiplied by some constant in choked condition. Uh, p naught is constant t naught is constant, but you decrease a that means mass flow rate has to uh, decrease and how does this decrease it will affect the upstream uh, upstream whatever velocity it was coming at initially that will decrease. So, automatically mass flow rate will uh, decrease ok. So, uh, the other thing is what happens when uh, stagnation pressure is changed when nozzle is in uh, choked condition. So, when you change stagnation pressure and nozzle is working and this conversion nozzle is working in choke condition, uh, then mass flow rate will increase again you can go back to this particular form P 0 increases mass flow rate increases. Not only mass flow rate increases the pressure and density at exit will also increase and that need not be the same as P ambient. Uh, what about the relationship between exit pressure back pressure ambient pressure in choked and not choked uh, operating conditions. So, this is what uh, we have been explaining uh, uh, till now that uh, as long as uh, your uh, nozzle or this convergent uh, duct is operating such that m exit is less than 1 that is m exit is less than 1 this is the exit uh, which is also the throat. Uh, as long as it is doing that uh, P exit is equal to P ambient or P back pressure whatever is provided. Uh, this uh, it satisfies this conditions the mass flow rate will adjust accordingly so that uh, the this condition is satisfied. But uh, the moment uh, uh, M exit becomes greater than or equal to 1 uh, if you give the correct uh, pressure ratio across the nozzle then uh, P e will not be equal to P ambient or back pressure ok. They need not be the same. What is P e you have to calculate by isentropic uh, relations. If you are increasing P naught then generally P naught P e will become uh, greater than P ambient. Then the nozzle can ha has enough uh, uh, pressure to expand further out of the nozzle. So, it will expand out of the nozzle uh, such kind of uh, expansion is called under expansion and uh, it will increase velocity significantly outside the nozzle, but we are talking about flows at the exit of the nozzle and in the nozzle. So, uh, flow having uh, done uh, expansion outside uh, we will have a little bit discussion in the next class about that. So, in next class we will see. So, now we have been looking at uh, converging nozzles we understood uh, the concept of uh, mass flow rate choking and also uh, how pressure uh, behave and uh, because of uh, pressure ratios how that nozzle behaves um, due to these changes uh, for a convergent nozzle. Now, we will uh, go and look at uh, convergent divergent nozzles how things change in uh, convergent divergent nozzles. So, thank you.